Ready? Des Moines City Council be in order. And everybody please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Normally you do roll call, but guess what? You don't do roll call until they're sworn in, so that's what we're going to do next. So I would like to call, I'm going to call them up in order of the position that they have. Um, position number two, Louisa Bangs. You and your officiant, please go to the podium. Can you hear me? Uh -huh. Am I loud? <laughs> <laughs> you are. I am Louisa Banks. I am Louisa Banks. Having been duly appointed. Having been duly appointed. To the office of. To the office of. The city of Des Moines. The city of Des Moines. Council position number two. Council position number two. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of this office. Discharge the duties of this office. As prescribed by law. As prescribed by law. And to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability. And that I will support and maintain. And that I will support and maintain. The Constitution of the State of Washington. The Constitution of the State of Washington. And the United States of America. And the United States of America. And not only were you appointed, you were elected, so. <laughs> Position four, Jeremy Nutting. <laughs> I, Jeremy Nutting, I, Jeremy Nutting, have been duly appointed, haven't been duly appointed to the like office to. of, to the office of, City of Des Moines, City of Des Moines, Council position number four, Council position number four, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially, discharge the duties of this office, discharge the duties of this office, as prescribed by law, as prescribed by law, and to the best of my ability, and to the best of my ability, and that I will support and maintain, that I will support and maintain the Constitution of the State of Washington, the Constitution of the State of Washington, and of the United States of America, and the United States of America. Hug. <laughs> And you too were elected, so <laughs> the appointment's a little stale by now. Yeah. Two, elect two elections later. And position six, Rob Back.
we've got a whole crew here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so, Robbie, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Robert K. Back. I, Robert K. Back. Having been elected and duly appointed. Having been elected and duly appointed. To the Office of City Council Position 6. To the Office of City Council Position 6. Within the City of Des Moines, Washington. Within the City of Des Moines, Washington. Do sw solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of this office. Discharge the duties of this office. As prescribed by law. As prescribed by law. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution of the State of Washington. The Constitution of the State of Washington. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. Congratulations. Seated. I've been asked to do an invocation tonight. I would like to uh, acknowledge all of the pastors and all of the clergy, uh, rabbis, or chaplains that are here. If you could just raise your hand tonight. Look around the room. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you for your spiritual support. And I just wanted to read two scriptures before we prayed. One is in 1 Timothy 2, verse 2. It says, pray for kings and all who are in authority. So that is what we're going to do tonight. But then it also says to pray and get involved. Jeremiah 29, in verse 7, says, and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. So that's what we want to do tonight. So I thank all of you that are involved because this is something certainly that is important and scripture uh, in, endorses us and wants us. And I worked, my wife and I have been down to Olympia and working in different legislation. And we know at times that it's a thankless job, but we appreciate your support and your servanthood. So I'd like to pray for you tonight. Let's all join in and pray. Father, we just thank you um, for your love and your goodness, and that you are concerned with every citizen, you're concerned with every civil servant, you're concerned with every law enforcement, everyone in a judicial position. Lord, we thank you that they have taken their time and their lives to serve the citizens of Des Moines, Washington. We ask for your wisdom and your understanding to be upon them, we pray that you would visit this council room over and over and over again. Give them wisdom, Lord, that they don't possess. Give them understanding. Lord, you give the seeing eye and the hearing ear. We pray that you would cause them to see things and understand things and connect the dots, to put things and officiate clearly, to legislate and make decisions that would serve the people of this city of Des Moines. Father, we look to you in this time in our nation, and we ask for your care and your concern. We pray your protection and the health of every one of these council members, health upon their families and their loved ones. Protect, O oh God, this city. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, amen. amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I wanted to acknowledge uh, King County Council Member Dave Up the Grove, who's been making the uh, swearing in uh, rounds uh, around. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, let the record show that all council members are present. Okay, at this point in time, we will have the selection of mayor. Um, are there any nominations? Vic. I'd like to nominate Mayor Pro Tem Pina for the position of Mayor of the City of Des Moines. Second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, uh, clerk will call the roll. Uh, Councilmember Pennington, how do you vote? 
Councilmember Back, how do you vote? I vote for Councilmember Beam to be mayor. Councilmember Banks, how do you vote? I vote for Councilmember Pina. <laughs> Councilmember Pina, how do you vote? <laughs> An agreement. <laughs> Councilmember Muster, how do you vote? I vote for Mayor Pro Tem, soon to be Mayor Matt Pina. Councilmember Netting, how do you vote? For Councilmember Pina. Councilmember Kaplan, how do you vote? For Councilmember Pina. And with that, on a seven or nothing vote, Matt Pina is the new mayor of the city of Des Moines. This takes us forward to the selection of Mayor Pro Tem. Are there any nominations for Mayor Pro Tem? I'd like to nominate Councilmember Vic Pennington for Mayor Pro Tem. I second. You ask if there's any other nominations. Are there any other nominations? <laughs> so, uh, please. Take the vote. Councilmember Pennington, how do you vote? <laughs> <laughs> I was raised not to do <coughs> unwise things, but I'll take a chance. <laughs> right, Councilmember Back, how do you vote? I vote for Vic for Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Councilmember Banks, how do you vote? Vic Pennington, Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor Pina, how do you vote? I support Vic Pennington for Mayor Pro Tem. Councilmember Musser, how do you vote? Well, since I started this, I support the nomination of Vic Pennington. I have to ask. <laughs> Councilmember Nenning, how do you vote? For Councilmember Pennington. Thank you. Councilmember Kaplan, how do you vote? Councilmember Pennington. Thank you. I apologize for having to pause while I put uh, put on and uh, take off glasses. <laughs> Things have changed over the years. Uh, I do have a few comments I'd like to make uh, before we go forward, and I think some of the others up here do so as well. So um, I'll start. I think it's important to say thank you. I want to thank the council and the public for their support their confidence, their mutual respect, and their friendship. I need to thank my wife, Michelle, of 33 years. It is not possible for, there she is. What most people don't realize is that in the role of service that we have all taken on, it's not possible for us to do this kind of work if we don't have the kind of support at home that we have. And uh, Shell makes everything happen for me. So um, I also want to thank my son, who unfortunately is not here tonight. But he is very good about keeping me aware of what the younger generation's concerns are. <laughs> my parents are here tonight, and it brings me a lot of pride to have them here. I need to thank them for seeing in me potential that I didn't, and for being encouraging and supportive and sharing their wisdom and insights when, to be honest with you, the road isn't very clear. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank the many friends and acquaintances that I have in the city. Their support and sharing of their honest perspectives is what enables us to get through and enables me to get through this process to do what's right. We oftentimes think we know what's going on, but then we hear that perspective from someone else and it really helps. So 
I'm always listening, and I'm always really, really thankful when people share. I'd also like to thank our now former mayor, Dave Kaplan, uh, for his 18-year passion and commitment to serving this community. It really is a pleasure to work with him. And the council's come a long way with, um, with Dave. I think our working partnerships today are better than any prior time that I'm aware of. And some areas where we've progressed include more public acknowledgement of community members and uh, groups and city staff. We have new work study sessions like those with our educational community and our internet ser service providers and others. Dave worked very hard on the alignment of uh, sound transits light rail from SeaTac to Federal Way, working with the council and partnering with surrounding mayors, um, creating a collective support for alignment that works for everybody but really is best for the city of Des Moines. Dave's also worked to streamline, um, to, to work with the council so we have streamlined our regulations and we facilitated uh, to, to facilitate and encourage development in the city. We've also worked to improve our reputation to that of a cooperative and reasonable place to develop and do business. Other improvements include budgeting, permitting, council rules, and prioritizing the marina as a business within the city. I've appreciated partnering with Dave while serving as the council's mayor pro tem. And I look forward to his continued contributions, especially in areas like transportation policy development. Thank you very much, Dave. A special point I'd like to make is that we are a council man manager form of government. And in the council manager form of government, we function the, 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 the format we function under, under, it's important to note that all council members have the same value. It's a shared leadership model, and it promotes collaboration and leadership development. When a mayor steps aside, I think it's important that the public understand that they're sharing, they do this to share the leadership role. That's all it means. It's not intended to indicate anything else. It's merely giving others a chance to carry the torch. It takes a lot of fortitude to do that. And again, Dave, thank you. Looking forward, we are in a place of change and continued community redevelopment. Given the varied and complementary council makeup that we have today, I'm excited. I will focus on taking advantage of the full knowledge and experience of each member of this council and I will utilize them to the best possible limits of, our, of their potential to bring success to our processes and the responsibilities that we face. Our continued focus needs to be on enhancing collaboration between the council staff and community, improving communication between the city and the community it serves and supports, and finding appropriate solutions to the financial challenges that face the city. We will emphasize long-term strategic budget planning. I really am looking forward to what we can accomplish together. And as we progress, everything we do is with the city's best interests at heart. So I thank you, everybody, for being involved and coming out tonight. Please stay involved. And with that, I would like to ask Councilmember Pennington if he has any comments he'd like to make. I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Pennington. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple comments as well. And Melissa, I'm, I'll thank you now, maybe. But, or maybe I should reflect on it for a year or so and then see. But no, Melissa, thank you for the nomination to serve as Mayor Pro Tem. And thank you to my peers for having the trust in me to serve in this position. And it's, it's truly an honor and it's truly humbling. So thank you very much. And as I reflect back over the last couple of years here on the council, um, I think about the different friends and the different citizens, elected officials that have all given me 
some words of wisdom, encouragement, support, and you all know who you are, so thank you all very much. And most of all, I'd like to thank my family, and more importantly, Susan. Susan. <laughs> She's supported me through this. <clears throat> She's tolerated time away from home, and I'm very thankful and very humbled, Sue. Thank you so much. And Mayor Dave, you'll always be mayor for me, but um, thank you for almost two decades of service to the city of Des Moines. Thank you for your time and your influence that you've shared in Olympia. It's been a privilege to have served with you as the mayor, to have you as a colleague, and to count you amongst my friends. And that being said, um, I just want to point something out. Kind of came to light last meeting, but it, it, it's been going on for a while. You just seem to forget my name all the time. <laughs> so, so I decided to help you with that and got a packet of these. <laughs> and, and I'm going to, uh, you know, we'll put them on. Yep. Oh, right there it is. And we'll put them on. And I hope that helps. <laughs> so... Between that and my glasses, uh, that should. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Well, you know, I, and I'm very proud to serve with this council. This is a, a really unique council, and I've had, I've had the opportunity to, well, you know, growing up here like, like some of us, you know, you, you watch the councils over the years, and you watch all the different dynamics and all the things that go on. And this is a, a really cool, good set of council members. There's a great vibe going on, and, and so um, I'm thankful to be here in this time. In, in 2015, you know, this council's seen some, some things that have been unprecedented, unpredicted, and for some of, those, some of those things hit some of us right at home. Yeah, it was really personal. Um, but you know, that, that comes with the territory, good or bad. It's part of public service, part of what we have to, to be a part of. But it's always good to take away the little nuggets when we have these different types of encounters. And, you know, I, I also firmly believe that in 2015, we as a community, we as a council, we grew through those experiences. There are people here that, um, that weren't involved until some things happened. You know, and sometimes it's not easy to take the right path. It's easier to take the safer path and just kind of hope for the best. And, and sometimes we just leave things to, to chance. And that, that certainly isn't my nature. And as, as I've witnessed, it is not the nature of this council. And nor is it in the fabric of this community. This community is, has a long history of standing up for what's right. You know, you look at the history of the third runway, you look at other things that have gone on in, in this city, our, you, us, and stand up for what's right. The other thing that happened in 2015 is I witnessed an awakening of sorts. We had a lot of people that, that came together from different walks of life. We, we have parents and teachers and attorneys and service club members and business owners and community volunteers. They all came together. They, 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 they engaged in the community, and they engaged with a lot of passion. And, and they did it for a variety of reasons. They did it for public safety. They did it for youth and senior services. They did it for parks and rec. But they did it with the same goal in mind, and that's to make our city, our neighborhoods, our communities a better place to live. And, and they take pride we all take pride in a city that we call home. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. And in 2016, we'll still have some challenges. 
and we'll be working on some things left over from 15. And I believe in this council. I believe in you, the citizens. I believe in our businesses and our employees. And I believe that if we all work together in a true partnership, we'll get through this. We'll find solutions to our problems. That's the only way that, that we're going to do it. You know, we're going to look at, at strategic planning for long-term um, dollars. You know, the, 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 it, we have to have this economic vitality. And so we have to, we, we, we can't, it's not fair just to dump it all in one area. We have to look at this solution as a community. We have to look at public safety, whether it's police, disaster management, emergency management. We've got to look at maintaining our, our infrastructure. We, we've got so much work to do. And we've got to look at our youth and our senior services, you know. Um, and, and then finally, our city. What do we want our city to be? We're, we're a water, we, we call ourselves the waterland city. We'll make it through it and we'll, we'll have this city, we'll be filled with pride, we'll be walking with some swagger, and we'll be doing it with some passion. And Jeremy, don't worry, I'm about ready to land the plane, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, but you know what, really, Thank you all so much for taking the time to come out and support your city, to come out and witness this, this change in our city. And please stay involved with your community. Stay involved with volunteer groups. So just thank you, thank you, thank you again. Uh, are there any of the newly elected or any other council member that would have any comments at this time? What, can, can sure. um, I don't have anything prepared. I just want to say, like I read it, read it at the last regular meeting uh, last year when I publicly greeted this council, uh, that I need a lot of patience because I'm on this huge learning curve. And you don't pick up something like this and just hit the ground running. There's a lot to learn. So. Um, I'm excited to be with this team. This is a really healthy city council. So, <clears throat> and I want to say a special thanks to my faith community. And it meant a lot to me to see a number of pastors and chaplains come here tonight. Uh, you are my family. I've been single for 20 years. And my church family, and it's not just one local church, it's, it's a number of churches throughout the area here, but that is my family. And um, without their support, I wouldn't have had the courage to do this. So, um, And a special thanks to Chaplain Limbo. Um, I love you, brother. Uh, I appreciate the invocation you did tonight. So that's all I have to say. So let's get to work. Thanks. <clears throat> I, I want to thank all my family, all my friends, all of the citizens of Des Moines that came out tonight. This is really great energy in this room tonight. I'm hoping we can move forward with this at every meeting. I know there'll be some tough meetings forward. But I want to say I'm honored to serve on this council. I want to say I appreciate all the different personalities, all of the different strengths of this council. Um, I really appreciate you, Dave. You've given so much of yourself, and I know it's tough, but boy, you're not leaving. You're not going anywhere. You just don't have the gavel, man. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay. Uh, but we'll have the challenges, and, and I will say that uh, the past year, at least the short time I've been on the council, we've been tested. Uh, it hasn't been easy, but I think we've come through it better. Uh, I think there's a lot of citizens who still probably... Uh, you know, feel the challenge still needs to be there. That's a-okay. Uh, we're here for it. We're here to expect some support and some help. So it's not just going to be all about what we do. It's about what all of us do. So I want to say thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge. You have no idea. And um, I just think it's going to be awesome. So I'm looking forward to the next four years. <laughs> I'll be short and sweet. 
Um, I want to first off, I want to thank my wife and my two wonderful children that I drag all over this city. Um, they they do a wonderful job, and behind every good man is a great woman. And my wife has dealt with a lot in the last two and a half years. So, thank you very much. Thanks to the community for standing behind me um, and giving me another four years to do some great things. I look forward to 2016. It's going to be it's going to be tough, but it's going to be some good times. And we've got a lot in front of us that is happening right now. Um, I want to thank the council for standing behind me as well. Um, I, I appreciate the uh, their friendship and um, being colleagues. Um, it's great. Um, thank you, Dave, for taking some time with me. Um, I'm a little rough around the edges, and you've <laughs> put up with me for two years, so I, I appreciate it, and I look forward to the next couple of years. And Melissa, thank you for pushing me over the edge. <laughs> so getting me into this position. So thank you. And that concludes my remarks. So I, I know I've, I've told the story over and over again, but I like to retell stories. So um, I'm sure everyone knows now, about six and a half years ago, I filed to run against Dave. And I am really glad you didn't beat me in that election because it has been such a privilege to get to know you and learn from you. I consider you my mentor here in the city. Um, there's been a handful of issues we've disagreed on, but um, you know, I've, some of the most challenging and best conversations I've ever had about city policy and the future of the city have been with you. Um, your, your passion for your convictions for what is right for the city, um, you know, with rapid transit, making sure that the citizens were heard, even if sometimes, I think, you know, Vic brought it up earlier, that the easier thing would have been to just, you know, not fight the fight, but you were always there and you always represented us, you were always on the front line. I think we've joked often that your employer is going to be actually happy to have their employee back now that you've not been spending so much time doing city work. Um, but I will have to say that in your tenure as mayor, there was just really one thing you dropped the ball on until tonight, which I have to thank you for finally recognizing that, <laughs> that I am the Des Moines City Council princess. So <laughs> thank you for the gift that only Dave Kaplan could give me. Well, Dave, you get a chance for a rebuttal. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate the kind comments. Um, but the things, the things that we've accomplished were things that the council has set out for a long time, things that we, we've wanted to get done, things that we've cooperatively worked on. Um, a, a lot of that goes back to the conversations that Matt and I had uh, about four a little over four years ago when we talked about leadership for the city, how the direction we wanted to go, um, providing a continuity um, of leadership, um, whether this is my last term on council or not, if it is, having somebody with knowledge and experience to be able to carry the ball forward, um, and, um, and yet still have people who are good in what they do in their jobs, who bring different perspectives because of the work that they do. Um, in prior years, there were a lot of retirees that served on the Des Moines City Council. And, you know, you had knowledge and experience there, but it's not the same thing as people who are working day to day, learning, you know, earning a living and understanding what it means to own a business and, and all that is entailed with that. Uh, understanding what it means in terms of the time commitment um, to get involved in the community. Um, and uh, we have that. And we've been working diligently for the last six years in particular, six to eight years, to turn some things around where our city wasn't the most friendly when it came to business. It wasn't the most friendly when it came to being supportive of, of, of encouraging businesses to come here. We're not a city of 4,000 people anymore. We're a city of over 30,000 people. And there's a lot of different communities within the city. And there's a lot of different interests within the city. 
and trying to balance that all out with the demands that the federal government makes, that the state makes, that the county makes, on top of everything that we want to try and accomplish. It's not an easy thing. The other thing to take note of is that we're talking about changing the perspective and the culture of the city that had been thinking a particular way for decade after decade after decade since we incorporated back in 1959. And it's really just been the last eight to 10 years where we've started to turn that around. It's like an oil tanker. It doesn't stop on a dime. It coasts for two or three miles before you can start making a, making a turn. Well, we're making a turn. You're going to see construction going on in the city, new businesses coming in, new buildings going up. Things are going to be happening this next year. They're going to, be, they're going to catch your attention. And those are the kinds of things that need to happen in order for the city to be on a sound financial basis going into the future, to make sure that we're able to provide the services that we all want, whether that's the police, whether that's parks, whatever services it is that we want. We need to be able to build that economic base in order to sustain the city going forward. A lot of that money, though, we're not going to see for three, four, five years out because it takes a couple years to build something and then a couple years of a business being in operation before you've got a predictable revenue stream so you know how much is actually going to come in before you can commit it to pay for something. And where we are right now is paying for the services we already have. We're playing catch up. That's why a lot of the decisions we've had to make in terms of taxes and potential cuts have not been an easy one. And as difficult as 2016 was, 2017's budget discussions and out are not going to be any easier. But what I can assure you is that the conversations and the continuity of the conversations that we have in terms of leading our city are going to continue to go forward. Because Matt Pina has been Mayor Pro Tem and has been there helping to steer that conversation and to direct that conversation and be part of that conversation. And if you want to talk about an old hand, <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Vic is going to be a steady hand at helping, as, as, as helping to build the part of the leadership team for Mayor Pina going forward as well. Um, to the rest of the council, I just want to say we've got a great group of people up here, people whose knowledge and experience and dedication particularly in terms of specific issues or specific functions of the city, have been extremely important. The addition of Councilmember Bangs, Councilmember Back, Councilmember Nutting, even within the last two years, bringing real life, real world experiences in terms of our facilities and how things operate is going to be extremely important going forward in terms of planning for what happens. Um, council member back uh, and I ran against each other back in 2005 and um, and I won that election but I knew at some point in time your time would come and so I'm I'm happy to see that you've been able to join us and I look forward to your insights and your thoughts and your efforts at helping to improve the city um, the only other thing I wanted to take note of uh, in terms of, uh, obviously, Matt and Vic, I know you're going to do the, the best that you can for the city, and, and we're all going to be the better for it. But last week, um, last week was Carmen Scott's birthday. And it gave me pause Thanks. to remember that someone of her dedication to the city, commitment to the city, and love of the city, and all from a positive perspective is what we need to keep in mind when we're doing our job. So with that, I think it's time we get started.
At this time, um, with the council's indulgence, I'd like to take a, a, a ten minute break um, before we got into the real business of the evening. Yep. So everybody okay? Okay, uh, we will adjourn for ten minutes. We uh, will return at uh, seven fifty one. Thank you. Acknowledge the scope elements included in the candidate project reports of interest to you and note if there are any scope elements that have been overlooked or included unnecessarily. And I want to bring some thoughts to your attention that might affect the tone of your uh, response to Sound Transit. As you know, this is going to be the biggest uh, tax vote in our area in a long, long time, if not in history. Uh, it's going to be on the ballot in, in, in November of 2016. Uh, it's going to be, for the first time ever, we're going to be pitting transportation against schools for property taxes, 25 cents per thousand property tax, uh, eight-tenths of a percent for motor vehicle excise tax, half a percent of sales tax. For the average uh, citizen household in King County, that's going to be about a $500 addition to the current $500 per year that is going to sound transit. That's going to end up to be uh, in the range of $1,000 per household forever and ever per year for sound transit. I want you to think about what you're asking for. I want you to uh, particularly think about the issue of sub-area equity. This issue of sub-area equity was incredibly important in the 1996 vote that established sound transit and basically says money collected in areas is going to be spent in that area. That has been violated, failed, hasn't happened, and the current sound transit board is talking about changing the rules about sub-area equity so they can do more of what they've been doing. And I would like to see you include something in your letter back to Sound Transit about the sub-area equity issue. That is something that they put on their website and say they're doing something with. And so I think you ought to weigh in on your thoughts about that. And the other big deal, big question I have is the costs that have been occurred since 1996. This is 19 years we're into this exercise. Uh, there was a vote in 2008 that kind of doubled the taxes then. Now this vote will double it again. And the question to you, and I've outlined in four different items in my letter to you, that you each have a copy of the letter that was distributed earlier. And it's about the costs to your constituents. How much, and, and you really ought to ask Sound Transit to get for you how much, uh, tax revenue from your community has been submitted to Sound Transit in the last 19 years, and what's the estimate it's going to be for the next 30 years? Because they're going to sell bonds, and this is going to be a 30-year deal, and these taxes aren't going to go away until the bonds are paid off. So at least 30 years, they probably won't sell the bonds for another five or eight years, so it might be closer to 40 years that this $1,000 a year for per household will go on. Um, and then ask, what are we getting? How is it translating into such things, maybe like congestion relief? Are we, what are we getting for 1000 bucks a year per household? Are we getting any congestion relief? Is this a positive thing for transportation in our community, in your community? Um, and Mr. Bishop, both now and in the future. So yeah. Um, and. The other metric that I think you probably ought to look at is how many transit riders from Des Moines are expected to be created by this $1,000 a year per household forever? How many ridership, what's the ridership going to be? And ask Sound Transit some of those hard questions before you uh, say, attaboy, doing a great job, we love your uh, process. Uh, it's all great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Bishop. Our next speaker is... Uh
King County Council Member, uh, Mr. Dave Upthegrove. Des Moines resident. And Des Moines resident, I should add. <coughs> yes, Dave Upthegrove, uh, 14th Avenue South here in Des Moines, walking distance. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, I wanted to stop by tonight for a couple reasons. One, to congratulate the newly elected, particularly Councilmember Back and um, Councilmember Bangs. You know, Jeremy, you've been here a while, so. I, but congratulations to also wanted to congratulate um, Mayor Pena and also wanted to thank um, Councilmember Kaplan <laughs> for uh, the service he's provided. Um, you know, some of you may know this, my father lost his vision about nine years ago. And a couple summers ago, I drove up to Burien and scooped him up, and we drove up to Lake Washington, and we, uh, it was 5 a.m., and we jumped into the cold water of Lake Washington. And with me swimming next to him, we swam a half a mile. Then we got on a tandem bike, and we pedaled for 12 and a half miles. And then with me at his side, we ran a 5K. And my father, at age 75 and blind, successfully completed Seattle's Seafair Triathlon. And as we're coming across the finish line that morning, I realized he was demonstrating an important truth. And it's this, working together, we can overcome any obstacle. And I think as a council, that's your responsibility. As an elected official, that's my responsibility, not only to work together as a council, but with the citizens. Uh, I, for one, am proud to have you as my council as a Des Moines resident. You've had difficult issues in the year ahead, you're going to, or in the, in the past year, you're going to have many, many more difficult issues. Um, I have a new sympathy going from the state house where there's 98 to the county council where there's nine for what it means to be part of a, a body of seven is challenging interpersonally when you spend that much time together. It's a very human process. Um, I also know how thankless it is when you're not in office. It looks sexy and fun. When you're in office, you realize it's a lot of hard work and everyone's mad at you. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm here to appreciate your service and, and wish you well in the year ahead and let you know I stand willing to work with each of you and your and your city and staff on regional issues as, as they arise. So best of luck. Thank you. And our last signed, uh, speaker signed up is Mr. Scott Evans. Good evening, I'm Scott Evans, uh, 1127 South 243rd Court. I am a board member for Destination Des Moines and the co-chair for the Main Street Committee. I am here today to invite you to three events, the first of which is next Wednesday, uh, the 13th of January. Uh, that is uh, the first meeting for 2016 for the Main Street Committee. Uh, the meeting will be at 6 o'clock p.m. At the, within the upstairs at the Scotch and Vine. Um, our goal of the Main Street program is to utilize community assets uh, to revitalize our downtown. Uh, the other events that I am here to announce tonight is um, the first Des Moines networking event, which will be held uh, next Monday night, the 18th of January. It is also being held, but uh, downstairs at the Scotch and Vine. Uh, this event is kind of an open house. Um, it's a great opportunity to meet your local business owners. And this starts at 5 o'clock. Once again, it's kind of an open house event. And then the other event is uh, for the Destination Des Moines board meeting. It is the following Tuesday, uh, the 19th of January. It is also going to be held at the upstairs at the Scotch and Vine. Uh, the meeting starts at 6.30. Um, as all of you are aware, and I hope everybody in the audience is aware, Destination Des Moines is uh, the coordinating event for our community events, the Waterland and the fireworks, as well as several other events. So we would love to see you all there to help support us and uh, be involved within our community and with these events. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the council that did not have a chance to sign up? Seeing no one, we will move forward. Um, we'll, we'll do the exec session at the end of the meeting, Your Honor, so we can go to board and committee reports. Yeah, so that takes us to board and committee reports. Um, and we'll just start with Mayor Pro Tem Pennington. Well, I think I pretty much used up my time earlier, but um, thank you all again for being here, and thank you for staying. And um, I don't, we, we didn't have any committees, you know, between the last time we spoke and today. 
Um, so, that's the report. Congratulations to everybody and welcome aboard. And we're going to rock 2016. Uh, what's the board and committee report? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to mention I'm on a learning curve. So, I'm not on any board or committee yet. So, I have nothing to report. Thanks. Okay, Councilmember Beck. Uh, <laughs> Councilmember Beck. Uh, no committee report. Councilmember Musser. Nothing unless you want to put my crown on again. Sure. Come on. One more moment. No. no okay. I'll save it for the parade. Okay. <laughs> Councilmember Nutting. I just have one quick comment. Um, it was Wednesday or Tuesday, Dan. Um, I, I just wanted to say, moving forward in 2016, the budget that we've adopted has um, we adopted some things that are going to we're going to see cutbacks on services and Dan's crew and Dan jumped on getting a tree removed from the Des Moines Creek trail within minutes of an email that I sent him and by the time my wife got down the trail it was cleaned up cleared out of the way like it never happened a tree had fallen over the trail and it, maybe half an hour it was all gone and you couldn't even tell we are going to see reductions in that kind of service I thank you Dan and your crew for getting that taken care of as fast as you did um, it was incredible so thank you to all Des Moines staff and what they do that concludes my remarks Councilmember Kaplan just a few things um, first I wanted to take note um, unfortunately um, Washington Natural Guard um, Staff Sergeant Matthew McClintock, um, a 30-year-old um, Green Beret uh, who was on his third tour of duty in Afghanistan, was killed um, as a young wife and uh, infant child. And um, it's been a while since we've had anyone in our community who's been lost uh, as a result of the actions there in the Middle East. And um, I think the family needs a little bit of help prior to the um, Veterans Administration catching up with them. I believe there's a GoFundMe page out there. So if you find it in your heart, um, please, please visit that and contribute. Um, in the last uh, week, I've had three meetings. Um, actually, I don't know why I've taken it fact a couple weeks ago one was with um, uh, a group of people from our representative Orwell um, representative from uh, King County Housing Authority and from uh, Washington State Department of Commerce who handles uh, mobile home relocation uh, there were representatives also from people representing tenants in the mobile home parks up in Pacific Ridge that are uh, within the ownership of the DEVCO um, development, Waterview Crossing that's talked about up there. Um, notice had gone out to all three of the mobile home parks, and so we've been talking about what options and, and finding good ways to be able to uh, educate people as to what their options are, uh, what their legal rights are, and um, uh, trying to figure out uh, the best way to try and minimize the impact. Um, there are 133 Highline sc uh, school district kids uh, from those approximately 100 uh, uh, mobile homes up there that uh, attend school in the Highline school district. And so, of course, trying to find a way to, to keep them here uh, is, is part of that conversation. Um, the representatives of the tenants are going back and uh, going to have conversation with the tenants there. And um, uh, the fact that the state and the county uh, housing authorities are involved is um, <coughs> providing some options available. And um, uh, Assistant City Manager Michael Mathias also attended the meeting and, um, and has more information on it if you want to know. Um, there was a meeting uh, yes, yesterday with Highline? Yeah. 
Okay, thanks. Um, with Highland College, we were talking about a couple of issues uh, that they have uh, regarding some potential development in their area. And um, they expressed a great deal of interest in, in having the council take a look at um, the zoning for the area on the south side of 240th. Remember when we looked at the um, uh, transit-oriented development commercial zone up in there when we really were just taking a look at what's happening on Pack Highway um, all the way down, um, but in that first stretch uh, around the college and within the a quarter mile of essentially of where the um, uh, Sound Transit station is going in there. Um, staff started talking uh, to us about potential changes in land use and zoning to areas to the west of the properties that front Pack Highway, and council wasn't ready at that time to delve into that conversation in terms of how far west, even if we were interested, that kind of thing. Um, but I think there's a lot of interest in, in taking a look at that on the part of the college and some others. And so um, at some point in time, it probably won't fit on our work plan for this year, but at least in terms of considering it either later in the year or in, or in terms of planning for 2017, we should make sure that we've got, we should take a look at that again. Um, and then um, the last was a meeting this morning um, with uh, Green Corps, their uh, human resources director who handles human resources for them across the country and talking about workforce development issues. Um, obviously, they want to be up and running in the business park, I think, come, was it May? Um, and um, we're trying to find ways to help them reach out to people who live in the community for uh, potential jobs with them. They've talked about um, um, a job fair and they've also talked about a constant need for being able to recruit people because it is tough demanding work, most of it, and that there's a fair, fairly high rate of turnover, so there's gonna be a constant constant need to be able to, to fill their positions. Um, and there's been some brainstorming on ways to be able to reach out uh, here within the Des Moines community and um, being able to utilize the city's resources, not only for Green Corps, but make it available to all employers in the city um, to be able to uh, search for employees and, and for us to be able to help promote it. And, um, and so we're looking at what those options are, and I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about that. So anyhow, those are, that's my report. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, I don't really have, again, a report. We haven't had committee meetings and so forth, but again, it, this, is, this is very humbling. And I just want to say thank you. I want to thank everybody for sticking around. I want to thank everybody who came. As you can see, just from the reports that are here, there's always work going on, even during the holiday times and so forth. We're always out um, working on issues. One issue that... Uh, Councilmember Kaplan talked about that is something I want to pursue even stronger is that we have the development of um, a number of properties in a business park in the city and we really need to see what we can do to help people who live in this city potentially benefit from those opportunities. So that's, that's one of those things that um, I'm looking forward to talking to everyone about as we, as we go forward. Uh, Council, um, sorry, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, did you have a comment? I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the name. Uh, um, the, uh, somewhere I, I, I saw over the last couple of weeks um, an email come across. Um, I think Highline College is at work. I saw this. I think Highline College is having a job fair. I don't remember if it's January or February, but it's something that you may want to put those folks into contact with the college. Another thing that we, I think we might want to look at is uh, how to better utilize our Channel 21 and what we're allowed to do with it. And because if, if that becomes a place that uh, local businesses or businesses within the city can advertise their jobs, it'd be uh, you know, a good place for people. Communications report uh, presentation. Oops, sorry to preempt. Uh, That's so. fine. Jump ahead all you want. Okay. So with that, let's go to the administration report. A few things. Uh, 
First of all, the Massey Creek reconfiguration project uh, that we have been waiting to get going for several years is finally going to be going out to bed in about three to four weeks. Uh, so that's good news. <clears throat> and I'm kind of moving these things all up in uh, a time of order. The boardwalk project will go out to bid on Monday. And uh, Andrew Murgis, our project uh, manager on that, will be down at the Mass Center tomorrow night from 4 to 5. Uh, and his role will be to answer questions about that, uh, mostly, but also about some of the study work that we've been doing about uh, the Redondo parking issues and pedestrian issues and things like that. So he'll be there for an hour. Um, segment 1A um, uh, on South 216th Street of the Gateway Project, a bid opening is next week. Which day, do you know? Tuesday. Uh, so we've got a lot of public works projects that are getting to the finish line as far as the permitting, bidding, and contract award stage. All of these are going to start being constructed uh, this year, some within the next month or two, uh, some into the summertime. We've got several other projects that are going to be coming forward here over the next few months. So uh, not just the development going on in the city, but the city itself is doing a lot of work. So um, we're going to ask everyone for everyone's patience because you're going to see some um, interruptions in traffic and uh, things like that as we're doing these projects, but we'll do our best to minimize that. Uh, but all of those are fantastic news, things uh, we've been working on for many years. Um, public records request. I mentioned to council several weeks ago, um, Mr. Clemens, uh, who made the request to all cities in King County for every record that they possibly have. Uh, Mr. Clemens came to City Hall a couple days ago and he started going through some of the paper records that we have that have not been digitized. Uh, he also went to the city of SeaTac and evidently he put out uh, some sort of a social media post or tweet that uh, he was working with the cities um, and at least we were trying to find a way to get him information that he would find useful uh, and that caught the eye of Alyssa Hahn, a reporter for King 5. So she came down to Des Moines this afternoon uh, and she uh, did some videoing of Mr. Clemens going through records. I believe Tim George went on camera to talk a little bit about uh, our policy and how we're working with uh, Mr. Clemens. And it was supposed to air at the 630 News tonight. And I don't know if the city attorney was able to watch it or not. I was nope. Not. Nope. Couldn't find it. So uh, you might want to go check out King 5 and see if it, it, it did. Yeah, Great. Thank you very much. Uh, the Hyde Shuttle. Uh, that is a shuttle service uh, provided by uh, a group called uh, Senior Services. They have a new name, Patrice. What are they now? Okay. Uh, we were the first. We were the we were the first uh, senior center that they provided this type of service to uh, back in what ninety six, ninety seven, somewhere around there, and it was so successful they expanded it countywide. Well, unfortunately, funding is not what it used to be, and they are cutting back the service everywhere throughout King County with one exception, and that's the Des Moines Senior Center. Uh, and the main reason for that is because we have uh, a core of volunteer drivers that keeps the costs, provide the service very low here. And I think that's a testament to Patrice Thorell and Sue Padden for their efforts reaching out, making sure that there is a, a group of people who are willing to volunteer to drive those shuttles because without them, uh, there's a lot of people in our community who would not be able to do something as simple as go up to the uh, senior center for lunch. So um, I'm very uh, thankful that that is going to continue, and uh, we hope it does for many years. And then finally, I distributed to council a copy of an email. I should have done it electronically, but I didn't get it till late in the day. Or I should say I didn't look at it till late in the day. Uh, regarding a program called Reach Out Des Moines. It's a coalition of a variety of organizations um, that want Des Moines youth and families to have more access to support and programs. Um, the big project that they did last summer was uh, working with Pacific Middle, middle School youth uh, and expanding summer opportunities for youth in Pacific Ridge uh, in that neighborhood by providing free lunch program, recreation programs. Uh, it was a very successful program and they have been so happy with it. They are now working to uh, strategically plan what can they do next, how can they expand, how can they provide more services uh, to our community. And since you all don't have a copy of this in front of you, but I can give it to you if you'd like, let me just read off the names of the organizations that are part of this. Uh, you have Franciscan Health, Highline School District, Pacific Middle School, Des Moines Police Department, Des Moines Parks Recreation Senior Services, 
Midway Covenant Church, Des Moines Area Food Bank, King County Library System, King County Public Health, Highline College, Highline Medical Center, Mount Rainier Pool, Valley Cities, U.S. Department of Justice, and there are more. But uh, what a great program, what a great effort, and uh, as far as an emerging issue, uh, we're looking forward to seeing them come up with new programs and new ways to help um, families in our community. So that, Your Honor, is my report. Uh, yes. Tony, you'd mentioned the Redondo Boardwalk. Somebody had asked me before the meeting tonight. I knew it was going out to bid, but what, again, is the expected completion date once we do hire a contractor? We expect uh, to give notice proceed to start the project sometime in the March time frame, uh, at the very latest, early April, and we're hoping to have it done before the end of summer, uh, maybe into the early fall. This year? Yes. Okay, that takes us uh, forward to the consent agenda. Uh, item one, approval of minutes. Item two, public defender's contract. And item three, 2016 to 2017 recycling program funding and professional services contract. And that concludes, concludes the consent agenda, Your Honor. Is there any council member wishing to remove anything from the consent agenda? Seeing no one do, uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilmember Musser, second, second by Councilmember Bangs. Any discussion? Uh, the only thing I took note of is the huge increase in public defense services. Um, I think, I think, uh, Given the circumstances of the court decision and everything, I understand the circumstances under which we're looking to avoid um, either additional costs or um, potential suit that claims that you're not providing adequate services. I think our public defenders have done a good job over the years and um, with a difficult resource constraint, but quite honestly, it's a huge it's a huge increase um, in terms of in terms of dollars, and um, um, I think we're going to have to just keep take note of this as one of those things where we have no control over what those costs are. It's driven either by the state or by some court decision that is there to ensure that essentially indigent defendants are getting the level of, of representation in terms of the services that are provided to them that er anybody else who can afford to hire a private uh, defense attorney get. And um, um, I mean, it's a, it's a federal constitutional issue. And um, uh, it's an example of just one of those many things. But the dollar cost, uh, <laughs> No offense, you're worth it, but uh, but but honestly, I mean, it's when you're talking tens of thousands of dollars in a budget when we were struggling for literally months to to call out tens of thousands of dollars, um, it, it's it's kind of disconcerting. But um, I think we should I think we should approve it. I just I think we needed to take note of it. And while uh, Councilmember Kaplan knows our public defenders. I don't know if the rest of you do. Uh, Julie Codd and Tracy Greenwood, if you would. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Um, seeing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 7-0. Okay. Taking us forward to old business, the communication plan. Staff presentation by City Manager, Mr. Pisek. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was last up in front of you in July. I gave you uh, an outline of what a communications plan would look like, uh, talked with you about uh, staff's efforts to date, uh, and now I'm back in front of you to give you an update as to where we're at. Uh, we actually have a written draft plan that includes a variety of strategies that staff uh, feels that we should be pursuing. Quite frankly, I will tell you, not all at once, because, um, well, we are limited in our staff's uh, 
resources. So first thing I want to do is recognize uh, my committee. Uh, so you see all the names up there, Andrew Murgis, Autumn Lingle, Bonnie Wilkins, uh, Cecilia Pollock, Dale Southwick, Ellie Hooman, Katie Bevegni, Laura Tachico, Louise Darcy, Matt Hutchins, Melissa Patrick, Michael Mathias, and Patrice Thorell. And I was just testing myself to see if I could pronounce all the names right. I think I passed. <laughs> um, the components of our plan, uh, I'm going to go through very quickly the first uh, four because those we talked about at uh, our, our meeting on July 23rd. Um, those would be what are our goals for a communication plan, what audiences are we trying to reach, messages. Uh, we did a, a very exhaustive, uh, call it a inventory of everything that we're uh, doing, all the things that we're sending out and the communications channels that we're working. So we have a really good idea what it is we're doing. Um, the next goal step will be uh, how can we enhance what we're doing. So just a reminder, these are our goals. Uh, we want our communications to be uh, proactive and reactive because there are times when we want the public to know something. There are times when the public is asking us for information or trying to tell us something. And we want it to be interactive. And part of our goal is to increase the community's understanding and knowledge of the city and what we do. Uh, and that will inc increase support for our, our city government and trust uh, from the community and our city government. Uh, this is a long list of all of the uh, audiences that we uh, need to be able to reach out to and hear from, which we talked about last time. Uh, messages. Uh, in the body of the draft report, I have a long list of all the messages and the methods that we're using uh, to communicate with the public. Um, did get input from council members at the meeting on the 23rd, additional input on uh, one-on-one discussions that I have had and some staff members have had as to what sort of other ideas we might have. And we've been researching the efforts of other agencies and uh, you'll see that as we are, uh, go through all the strategies. This is a laundry list of communication channels that we could possibly use. Uh, we're not using all of them. There's probably two or three uh, that we're not, for example, robocalls. We don't do robocalls right now. Robocalls are not in our list of strategies. However, council would like to see them there. We can certainly uh, work on that. So let's talk about what can we do to improve our communications. Well, first, and this was contained within the uh, report we did, I did in July, form a steering committee. So it's done. Uh, showed you the names here a few moments ago. Uh, we are working on establishing internal policies, particularly when it comes to some of those communication outlets that not all of us are using, and I'm thinking social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. Uh, this committee is going to meet regularly to make sure that all of our communications are relevant, accurate, and they're going, accurate, and they're going out timely. We want to coordinate our efforts to make sure that we're not sending out mixed messages. Um, You'll see here in a few moments, we uh, are going to be updating our website. So this committee will be the steering committee to make sure that we are coordinating it. And uh, ultimately, uh, we, I want this committee to be the one that is monitoring what we're doing and coming up with an evaluation process to make sure that we are being successful. An idea that came up uh, in a discussion, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I've got one question. Sure. In light of Mr. Clemens' request, Mm -hmm. How has the committee talked about how you would retain all the different communication that goes out through all the different channels that, as a public rec that is going as to records? Be, and it's going to be a challenge. We all already are doing some of the technological um, solutions for our, our website, our Facebook page, and our Twitter account. So we are saving all of that information because it is a public record. Mm -hmm. Public records we talk about uh, when I get to the website component. Uh, because we feel we need to make public records more accessible than they are now. Uh, there are certain things that are on the, the website, for example, all the council meeting videos, the minutes, uh, the packets, uh, resolutions, ordinances, all those things are readily available. Uh, I think there are other city documents that we could make readily available. For example, we have all of our budgets as well, but our financial statements, uh, you have to go to the, the auditor's website to find those. <coughs> I think there's an, an awful lot of work we can do to make information readily available to the public. So when we get a request for a public record, the city clerk can say, it's on the web. Go, and, go, go ahead and take a look. Um, 
if I could. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I'd like to see somewhere in the plan is at least some thoughts around something that people could download to their phone that would where where they wouldn't have to go to a website to find something when we wanted to push information we could do it and you'll see that in one of the strategies coming up okay however we also think we need to step back before we really continue plowing forward with everything we can do some of these ideas right away but we really think we should engage with the public and find out what is it they're wanting how are they interacting with us now how would they like to interact with us um, Peter Phillips of Phillips Publishing, um, we talked to him about what he can do to help us with his plan. He's the, he heads the company that publishes our uh, city currents. And he said he'd be happy to coordinate a survey, help us put it together, uh, get it into the city currents, use SurveyMonkey, um, <coughs> use hard copy as we go to a variety of community uh, meetings and events, and over the course of several uh, months, gather information as to what it is the public is hoping that we will do and what do they expect and what do they need. It's not a scientific study. It's going to be um, self-initiated. If you come up to a booth at the farmer's market or uh, you see it in the city currents and you fill it out, great. We will have your information. If you don't, we won't. Uh, so we can't claim it's any way scientific, but it will give us a good idea of what our um, public expects. Relationships with the media and community organizations. We talked a little bit about this uh, at, a, at the July meeting. Uh, we do have some good relationships with some of these organizations already. Waterland Blog, uh, who doesn't know or has not interacted with Jack Maine? Well, maybe a few you have, but have not. But he is the main reporter for the uh, blog who uh, does stories on uh, the city of Des Moines. Des Moines News and Highline Times, uh, we've interacted with their reporters. I think they have some new ones uh, recently. Uh, but reaching out to them and making sure that uh, they know who to contact if they need information. And quite frankly, if there's something that we feel needs to get out in their publications, we can reach out to them. And we've reached out, particularly to the Waterland blog, on many occasions uh, when we've had stories or information that we want to get out to the public. And in particular, the police department has reached out to the blog on many occasions. TV outlets. I just mentioned King 5 was out here. Uh, Council Member Kaplan and I have interacted with a variety of uh, reporters from the various stations and they give us their card and say let me know when things are going on. So we need to at least catalog that information, maybe reach out and say hey if you have any questions about what's going on in Des Moines, uh, contact the city manager, assistant manager, uh, police chief and the like, uh, mayor of course. Uh, so we need to cultivate those uh, relationships. Not as many with the Seattle Times, I'll be honest. I've probably only chatted with a reporter from the Times about maybe about a half a dozen times in the almost 20 years I've been here. But it wouldn't hurt to at least reach out and say, hey, here we are. Uh, Destination Des Moines, Mr. Hughes, I believe, was here just a few minutes ago, and uh, Tony Hetler is here. I think we have a good relationship with them, so working with them to get the word out about a variety of things that might be going on in the community I think would be good. Uh, our Marine Association, uh, Mr. Linscott was here. Uh, and I think that relationship has been getting better and better. And I like this idea of the January 27th meeting, having Michael uh, go out there and talk about what's going on with uh, development on the marina floor. Homeowners associations, I know some council members have reached out to homeowners associations and gone to their meetings. Uh, in past years when we were doing community meetings, we actually had some of those community meetings at uh, condominium uh, buildings or apartments. Uh, so I think that's something we can look at again. Our block watches are becoming a, a great way to get information out. The police department, again, has made use of them to get out information regarding PD, uh, but I think uh, other things might be appropriate as well. And then our faith-based organizations. We have relationships with two or three of our churches in town, but I think reaching out and, and trying to get uh, better relationships with more of them would allow us to uh, provide better information to uh, our community. And two that I didn't put up there that I do want to note here is the Puget Sound uh, Business Journal and the Daily Journal of Commerce. Uh, Mark Stiles is a reporter, I believe it's for the Puget Sound Business Journal. And uh, he used to be a reporter for the Des Moines News. And uh, I've talked with him a variety of uh, various times over the last couple of years about development in Des Moines. I know uh, Michael has, uh, 
Councilmember Kaplan, I think you have on occasion, and he was the moderator at a panel discussion at the um, Soundside Alliance breakfast that we had in, in December. So we have a good relationship with him, and when we want to get the word out regarding business activities and building and development going on in Des Moines, we need to make sure that he's kept in the loop. City Currents. Uh, I like the way ca the City Currents has been going the last several years. I think we have an opportunity to um, take it, as they say, to the next level, particularly with, uh, example, a column that uh, Council Member Kaplan did as mayor uh, talking about economic development activities going on in the city. I could see us having the first story in each edition of City Currents being something that we really want to make sure that the community knows about, highlighting development activities uh, or big issue that might be coming up, uh, anything that might be of uh, citywide interest. And occasionally maybe we highlight one of our departments. Our departments do have stories in every edition of City Currents, but it wouldn't hurt to highlight one of them every now and then just so people understand what these departments do and how they contribute to quality of life in the city. Uh, under messages, really what we want to make sure we do is that we're consistent, uh, that we have the same theme and the same feel to them, and that departments are made aware of that. And I think the steering committee activities will make sure that that happens. Our recognition program. Somebody made a comment about our recognition program earlier. I believe it was Mayor Pina. Um, I think we, it's time for us to take that to the next level as well. We do a quarterly employee re recognition program. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to start uh, recognizing people who are on our appointed committees and commissions, not just at their end of their service like we have, but occasionally when they've done something really special, when they've pushed forward a, a new program or a new event, uh, or they've done something that is uh, uh, that's above and beyond. So not just saying, here's your plaque, thank you for your service. Uh, let's do something while they're actually still on that board or commission. And then the Spirit of Des Moines Awards program that uh, Councilmember Kaplan started several years ago, uh, it's contained in our council uh, rules of procedure, and we haven't given that award every year. And I recognize that when it was put together, it wasn't meant to be something that happened every year. But I think we can take that program and enhance it and make it something that does become an award every year. And we could expand it to be um, maybe add two or three other categories, youth of the year, business of the year. Um, I think it could be become a really great way for us to uh, toot the horn of some of these people and organizations who are doing great things in our community that a lot of folks just don't hear about. I mentioned our uh, updating our design, our website. Uh, the cool thing is the provider of our website uh, is, had in the contract the ability for us to do a complete redesign uh, every four years, and this March is year four, so we're going to do a complete redesign. Uh, generally, we want the, the website to be more intuitive, more uh, easier for people to use. Uh, we want the information that they tell us they want to be easy to find right, off, right from the first page. One, two clicks, you get what you want. Um, and then we talked about some new and modified features that we'd like to see. I believe, again, it was uh, Council Member Kaplan came up with what I'm calling the interactive map. And I think I mentioned this at our uh, July meeting, a uh, map of the city that shows the five or six uh, neighborhoods of the city, and you click on your neighborhood, and you'll get a whole variety of information about what's going on in your neighborhood from building permits, crime statistics, projects going on. And hopefully not just our projects, but the water uh, district, the sewer district, even if the fire district is doing something in that community. It would be really cool for people to be able to find out what's happening in their neighborhood. Um, Fix-it reporting. Uh, this is along the lines of what Mayor Pro... Or, sorry, Mayor Pina. I'm going to slip that... All right, that's the only time I'm going to slip and do that. Uh, had been referring to. We have a fix-it... Um, item on our website now where people can click on it and report things to us. I think we can update that a little bit. Um, and I think we might be able to, well, the one you were talking about, Mayor, uh, Mayor I think it's on another one. So I'm going to, uh, on that one, we just need to be better on our uh, fix-it reporting, expanding the links that we have. We're doing online permitting. Uh, we're doing online business licenses. We need to 
uh, keep pushing that type of activity online because it frees up staff time. And I want to tackle animal licensing. And I, I had a little pushback from staff. I'm not sure how that would work. Uh, but I want it on the list, and I want us to work on it. And then on the meeting that we had this morning with the HR director from Green Corps Job Board, there's no reason why we can't have a place on our website for our local businesses to put notices of jobs that are available. Uh, and we, we feel that we should uh, make a rule that says it's a local business. We're not looking for something in downtown Seattle where people are looking for uh, new employees. This should be specific to Des Moines only. I would say AWC, their job board is like so, because you click on the link and it takes you to that employer's website. I think um, like Glassdoor and Indeed kind of do the same thing. So if it was just that IT is linking it to somebody else's job site, it makes it easier for our people too to just one click and off they go. So here's the one that the mayor was talking about. I'm calling it the opt-in information program. This is where you sign up to be provided information about things going on in the city. Uh, it could be a text message, a tweet, an email, a phone call, or a voice uh, mail message. You choose the medium you want. And I'd like it to be where you can choose what information you want. Do you want information about permitting in the city? Do you want information about park and recreation programs? Do you want information about police department activity, fire department activity? Uh, the technology is out there. Uh, the city of Seattle is doing it, so there's no reason why we can't jump in and make use of that. Actually, I, uh, in a conversation with some folks with the Highline School District, I, I haven't seen it, but I understand mm -hmm. that they do have an application in uh, both the Apple and Android stores. And again, it's about, it's how, there it is, it's, it's how they push information out to their, the, the public. And they're supporting what, five cities and two unincorporated areas and so forth. So um, maybe we should talk with them and see what the opportunity is. Absolutely. Government 101, this is something council talked about at one of its retreats and one of its budget sessions, and you are going to get session number one tonight from the city attorney on our form of government. Um, next week, she will give you a presentation on public records and the open, pub open public meetings. And then we think once a month, um, once a quarter, uh, but we're going to go with once a month for now. I'm going to push staff a little bit. Uh, let's talk about other aspects of government. And I've tasked Michael with giving us a presentation that we're going to call the art of economic development. Um, I wanted science, but he said, no, it's an art. So we'll go with what Michael says it should be. Uh, and I think that the reason I chose that one as the next one, and council, if you want something different, that's fine. Um, but we hear so much from our citizens, so why don't we have this business here, or why doesn't this happen here, or how come you can't get something to locate here? Um, you know, the, the simple answer is because we don't own the property or the business, and we can't force people to be where they may not want to be. But there's an awful lot that we can and can't do to encourage businesses to come here to encourage development to happen here and it doesn't happen overnight it takes a long time to tell our story get people interested and get them to a point where they want to do a project in the city or move their business here so i think having michael give that presentation in february is great timing uh, then we want to talk about our finances and uh, the finance director did a little bit of budgeting 101 during a budget retreat and i'd like her to reprise that and maybe um, put it together in a way that is a little bit, uh, no offense, more accessible to um, the public rather than to uh, council members who have been through a numerous uh, budget cycles and maybe understand it a little bit more. Uh, all apologies to my two newest council members, one who's been through one budget and the other who's not been through any budget. <coughs> uh, and then so on and so forth on the, the other topics, and we can certainly add more things in. Uh, we will record the, uh, these sessions. They'll be here uh, in the council chambers videoed. Uh, and then we can splice those out of the recording, and we can have an uh, item on our website. This is Government 101, the first one you'll see, Form of Government. Click on that. You'll see the presentation that will be um, made tonight. 
and if anything changes with our form of government, say in the next year, two or three, uh, the state legislature makes a change as to how it works, we can revise that, present it again, and then we have a no, new fresh version of the uh, uh, of the presentation. Uh, and I want to bro broadcast these on Channel 21. We want more content on Channel 21. With, with reruns, too, I think. Ab oh, absolutely. Yeah. Another item we talked about uh, at our uh, council retreat uh, was that I'm calling it a citizen's advisory council. Uh, I, th I think we also had the terms community advisory council, whatever name you want to give it. Um, there is a desire for us to create a body of citizens, residents, business owners uh, who would meet on a regular basis, uh, be provided information about what's going on in the city, and in particular, uh, brief them on issues that are going to be coming to the council or are at the council for council to make decisions and get their input as to what they think should be the council should be doing when it comes to a variety of issues. And this one will be an interesting one because it really is going to require um, hands-on activity by the council and staff to make sure that these are the questions council wants the, the council to uh, look at and the type of input they're hoping for. This, I don't think, should be a staff-driven type activity. It needs to be much more a council-driven activity. What is it you want? We can help facilitate those type of um, presentations to the committee or the council. And the cool thing about it is, what happens is these people learn about the city, they get engaged in the city more in depth than the average residents or citizen or business owner, and they might be your, your council members of the future. And when they come to the dais, um, they've got a lot of education uh, in their background, and they can hopefully just jump right in and be an effective council member from day one. Tony, 12, 15 years ago, I thought I rem remember we tried some kind of a citizen advisory council and it had just a little bit of life, and then it just fizzled after a few months. Do you remember what happened there? It, that actually was the Citizens Academy, I believe. And that's where, uh, and that was, was uh, actually coordinated by the uh, police department, and it was very police department focused. They did bring representatives from the various departments. We would have the mayor or the mayor pro tem or a council member come up and talk about how the council works, but it was very much focused on the police department. Uh, they're trying to revive that. Uh, and I believe they actually do have a few people who are interested in council member Bangs, maybe a little more aware of what's going on with that than I am, uh, being on the police advisory council. No? Well, unfortunately, we haven't met in a while. Okay. <laughs> then never mind. But I, I remember that was a real short-lived thing, and I never knew quite what happened to that, and if people just lost interest or there just wasn't a leadership. Yeah, I think it's to keep probably it a combination of both, but I heard a strong... <laughs> desire on the part of council to have this type of group pulled together. So we've included it on the list. So this is great. I'm, you know, you asked the question about the police advisory council. And I know you're not done yet, but I'm feeling already overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot here, there's a lot of content, there's a lot of work. You have a committee that's like 12, 13, 14 people. I'm not 100% sure how this will all uh, work, but there seems to be a, I know there's a push to get this out there, and I'm not sure what your time frame is on it, but it could be so overwhelming that it actually gets lost. So I'm not sure if there's going to be something in here that says, okay, here's how we're going to work this. Here are the people, and we don't need to know who the people are, but here are the people chunking it out into committees who are going to do X. I don't know if all of this communication and, you know, pushing it out to the community is internally done. Is there a cost to it? Are you reaching out to Highline to help? I, I'm not sure. I mean, this is truly great, but it's really overwhelming. Yes, yes it is. Um, and what I'm doing here tonight is I've, I've got 16 strategies that I think should be contained within our plan. I purposefully did not prioritize them uh, or say these are the only three we're going to be able to work on during the year because they may not be your priorities. And ultimately, it's council's priority that we need to focus on when it comes to communication. So I readily admit all these things we're not going to be able to do uh, in year one or even year two. Uh, this is meant to be a plan with short, mid, and long-term goals. So I got six more of these. Let me walk through them and then 
I'm going to ask you the question, prioritize these for me. Show me where you want us to focus our energy uh, because we can't do them all. Community meetings. This is something that we used to do in the late 1990s into the early 2000s. Uh, three or four times a summer we would go to a neighborhood, uh, oftentimes in a park, um, in early evening. Every department would show up. We'd set up tables. We'd have information about uh, our departments. We'd invite the fire department and the water department, our district, the sewer district, the uh, fire district, uh, our garbage collection folks and the like, and we'd just invite the neighborhood to come and talk to us. And for the first few years, it was very successful. I think, as I said in July, by the time we got to the end of doing this program, it was only our friends in Redondo who would show up because they really liked going to um, Wooten Park and it was easy to walk to. Uh, and they were very engaged. I think we should re revise these uh, meetings, but we need to have them in a little bit different structure. Uh, the invitations need to go out in a different way, uh, and they need to be more of an opportunity for the residents to have a interaction process with us. As, as an alternative, though, um, I've thought about the community meeting quite a bit. Um, you know, there's an opportunity potentially we start our, our council meetings at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And granted, we have committee meetings before council meetings, but there's an opportunity potentially to, at 6 o'clock, um, have an open house where the public can come in and uh, council members would be here. It may not be all the council members because there may some of us may be in committee. But if we put this together on a regular basis with council members and department heads and so forth, the folks are already here at work. We have a council meeting that night. Um, it's an informal setting anyway to, to talk and ask questions. And we might be able to do it with greater frequency than once a quarter in a neighborhood and things like that. So I, although I think this is a, um, when this happened, it was a, it was a, a successful uh, element. But we might have to look at things a little differently where we are in our 2016 budget uh, due to furloughs and things like that. We, we have a lot of cutbacks, so I guess I'm trying to give thought to, I guess, the economies of scale. How do we leverage when we are together anyway? And, you know, maybe it's not 6 o'clock, maybe it's 5.30. I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't worked out all the details, and but I think it's something that the council should think about. Um, and so maybe in, it, what might be a good idea is after we get through this, Tony, is to let us, you know, ingest this a little bit and set a date in the very new future to say, okay, well, what do we want our first steps to be? And does anybody have an alternative flavor to one of these things that might be successful for us as an alternative? I'm just, I think on the community meeting portion of thing, I think there's, I, I think we should re-engage the away game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a few times a year. Uh, I think there's some schools that we could visit and as well as, um, um, you know, other locations. And then I, I think with that, you know, combined with maybe some of these open houses, we might be able to capture some similar benefit without having to ask people to come in on, you know, outside the normal window. Right. Okay. So something to think about. Next item is in regards to social media. Um, I'd like us to be focusing on one or two or three uh, because there's so many out there. Um, Facebook and Twitter seem to be the ones that have the most users. The most important point I want to make on this is we need to make sure that the public understands that our Facebook page and our Twitter accounts are not manned 24-7, that you're not going to get an immediate response to a post you put on our Facebook page or a tweet that you send out, or when we send out a tweet, we're not looking for uh, a, a massive interaction process. It's more of an informational process. We could make it to a point where people could report things or have an interaction uh, on a limited basis, but we don't have the manpower to be able to manage it the way some other agencies do. Take WashDOT, for example. Um, they have a, c a couple of Twitter accounts, and those things, uh, they're going all the time. 
and my wife makes great use of that taking a look at what's going on with the traffic and uh, so we're as up to date as possible when when things are going on on the uh, on the interstate but I, I do want us to make a little bit more use of social media you are wise to consider though the manpower issue because Alaska Airlines also does this yep and you hire someone yeah. to, to monitor it. Uh, does Port of Seattle do something like this yeah. as well? Yeah. This is a full-time job plus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so as much as we would like to go down this path, we might have to look at some of the other items first because I, I'm not sure that we can um, Understood. dive into this one. And I think you've got a pretty active group of social media residents that there's times I'm getting things on Facebook before I think even you or George know about them. So um, I think really, yeah, in the hierarchy of things to consider, social media may be towards the bottom, middle of the pack. Because um, sure. like I said, it's, you've, got some, you've got some great community volunteers out there already. So the next one I have here is public and community events. There's opportunities for us to be present. So take the farmer's market. Uh, we've done PD at the market once or twice during the, the market season. Public Works has been down there a couple of times. Park Recreation Senior Services is down there a couple of times. We could expand on that a little bit, but we might also want to take a look at are there other opportunities for us to uh, have a presence. So we're at the Waterland Festival on 4th of July fireworks, but could we expand on what we're doing there? I mean, you got all these people there. Let's be present so we can answer questions, provide information. I put down the Blues and Brews and Wine Festival just as a thought. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but there you go. And then a lot of our churches have um, annual festivals, and we're not present at, the, at those. Maybe Parks and Rec is a little bit. Uh, maybe PD is a little bit, but those might be opportunities also for us to, in a very easy way, to set up a booth and a table and have literature there for uh, one or two or three different departments to be present to provide information. If it fits with what the church is doing and if they're willing to have us there. Tony, one thing I think, too, that might be helpful for staff to think ahead about is almost like, um, you know, like your trunk show, like you have a set show that you would take out that um, I know the PTAs have often used, you know, PD will come down, um, Judge Galvan used to come down in a robe and the kids could do pictures with the judge. Um, I know that Des Moines Elementary, North Hill Elementary, Parkside Elementary all really do a good job of getting in touch with the city and I mean maybe if there were three or four traveling kind of trunk shows that win those you know we could almost push it out to the, the PTAs and say you know if you're planning your carnivals and you're looking for a draw here's some things that you know we, we can do because I think I know you know Jeremy and I are, are good about that because we're here um, but I, I I don't know that there's an awful lot of you know Des Moines has their benefit auction every year um, just like a handful of, uh, you know, Mount Rainier High School has, you know, tons of booster club events that I think are great opportunities for us to reach a population of residents who maybe don't have time to come to the, any of the other city things because they're busy with their kids in schools, so. Great ideas. I think one of the challenges there as well is that um, we talk about a number of things here some dates come across the plate and you try and write them down as fast as you can and record them. It might be um, helpful I don't, I, to use Google tools or something like that to where we could actually start to put events that we know about um, if some, you know, on a calendar and the council and the staff and everybody else would have view to that, um, particularly through mobile devices or something like that. Just for an awareness purpose, it doesn't, it does, you know, if someone wants to, you know, communicate that they're going to be there, they might do it at the next one of the upcoming council meetings or something like that. But it's a way to bring it together, at least for us. So like a consolidated community calendar mm -hmm. kind of thing? Yeah, some, but, but, but in a, a software form. So, you know, you might only learn that something's going to happen uh, two weeks in advance. It depends, because some of these organizations don't notify us right away. But, um, you know, then you just... You post it out there, and you know a lot of these are dynamic. We can, if we have, if you have a smartphone, you could get it on that, or um, you know we could find some other means to do it. Uh, possibly even link it from uh, in a read-only mode from the website. So it's what we know. It won't be comprehensive, but the problem that we do run into is that as hard as Destination Des Moines and some of these other organizations try to put calendars together. 
because of the planning stages and when things actually come to fruition, oftentimes it's after press time. So, you know, those calendars become a moment in time as soon as they're printed. Right. So having something dynamic could be helpful. Good thoughts. Channel 21. Uh, we want to expand the use of Channel 21. So these Government 101 uh, videos we're doing, we want to get them on there. We want to look at do we have the opportunity to create more content of our own? And I think partnering with Highline College and Highline School District with some of the students who are in the video and media arts type programs would be a good idea. Give them an opportunity to learn how to do these things. But the next one is the one that I think uh, we might have an interesting opportunity, and that's allowing commercial content and advertising. Uh, the rules for Channel 21, as far as the feds are concerned and Comcast are, is concerned, is only 25% of the content that's on shown on Channel 21 has to be government related. The rest, we might be able to say, allow local businesses if they want to put together their own five minute video on the services that they provide in the community, we might be able to allow them to post it on Channel 21. And we might even be able to sell advertising. And we do so in city currents now. We can use the same rules we use for city currents. Uh, I want to go carefully on this because I, I don't want to open up that Pandora's box, but I think it's something we could take a look at. And then, as we talked about a little earlier, a job board. So get on the website, but if you happen to be on Channel 21 and uh, the job board pops up and it'll, maybe you'll go through four or five or six, here are jobs that are available in the community. So I think there's opportunity with Channel 21. I think we need to revive our internal newsletter. Um, city employees are getting my weekly report, uh, but there's a whole lot of other things going on in the city. Uh, some of it is just what's happening here uh, with new employees coming in, employees leaving, uh, things happening in their families if they're willing to share, uh, and the like. So, and also keeping them up to date with what's happening at the council level with projects going on. Uh, I think those would be good things to do in an, uh, an internal newsletter. And it doesn't have to be every month. It could be every quarter or three times a year. Um, but I'd like us to consider doing that again. And then finally, uh, a lot of cities, particularly those with strong mayor, have the mayor do a state of the city address uh, at the beginning of each year. Similarly, what happens at the uh, national level with the State of the Union and the governor does state of the state, uh, we think it would be a great way to, uh, kind of like we do at our planning retreats, take a look at our successes for the year and then decide what our priorities are going to be for the coming year. Well, this would be, here are what our successes for the previous year were, and here are our priorities for the following year. And that's something that um, staff and the mayor could work on. It could be something the mayor could uh, provide that address at the first council meeting of the year. We post it in, uh, on the website, we uh, put it in city currents, or we could even once a year send a special mailing to everyone in town saying, here is the state of the city. Here are the things that we accomplished last year. Here are the things we're going to work on this coming year. And it's not lost or cluttered in city currents. It stands by itself. I'd be anyway, happy to partner with the staff on that. Absolutely. It, 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 we couldn't do it ourselves. The mayor couldn't do it. Uh, it. It needs to be something done, coordinated. Yeah, yeah. So finally, uh, next steps. Uh, I need council input and direction, and I know, as Councilmember Bangs just commented, I've thrown a lot at you here tonight. Um, I'd like you all to think about what I've pre presented tonight, what you think mm -hmm. our priorities should be, uh, any ideas of things that I've missed, the, the committee's missed, that you'd like to see included in this plan? Uh, it says draft all over it, so it's certainly not a done deal. But we do need to prioritize. So at an upcoming meeting, Your Honor, we should schedule this for further discussion. I absolutely agree. Um, I have in the works a document that I have yet to get to you and to the council um, where a lot of these items were discussed at the retreat, but we never really got a chance to codify them into any kind of formal document. And um, I have had discussions with 
all council members at one level or another and um, put some of this together. Uh, my intent is to get this with, to the city manager and the assistant city manager so we can look at realistically um, staff, the staffing around and the effort what is, that it's going to take to actually accomplish these things. Many of these things actually fold into the communications plan because I think the conversation at the last retreat, we spent a lot of time on that. And it, it's, it's clear to us that we need to do a better job at helping the community understand not only what we're working on and what the challenges are, but um, what kind of government we are and, and, and how we really work. Because I think a lot of people are, are you know, a little bit surprised when they come and they they talk to us um, from the podium and they don't understand that we don't typically engage and respond at that time or whatever and I mean we need to help clarify that understanding um, the other thing is that we are the thing I like about the council uh, or government 101 that that whole series that were is being worked on is that there are a number of things that um, you know, people don't necessarily understand the difference between a city manager, council form of government versus a strong mayor form of government, and the reason why the city manager council form of government is ideal for Des Moines. So there's a lot of these things that will come forward. I uh, I recognize that I owe this. Uh, you and I have spoken, and I owe this document to you. I have a little bit of work that's going to probably take me into the weekend, and then we'll talk about setting up a meeting to review that um, uh, again it's around staffing and practicality and then I'll bring it to the council for their thoughts and then we can hopefully focus our efforts going forward from that and that should help with the priorities that you're some of the priorities you're looking for as well great thank you So this brings us to Local Government 101, our city attorney, Pat Bosmans. Um, Mayor and members of the council, I want to talk about former government. I want to give you a little context, but the purpose of this discussion is to provide source materials for you. Okay, so let's go through some of the attachments, and I'll show you. You've got a pretty lengthy PowerPoint. It's a lot of statutory sites, so I don't expect to go through them one by one, but rather... If you're interested in how we get to voting, what's the authority for voting, you've got it in here. You've got the statute. Uh, and and that's this is actually a pretty good source document. The other source document that was important for me to create for you was this legal authority for the council rules. When you go to a council rule, what's the statute? Why do we do it that way? Now, some uh, council rules are simply uh, left to the discretion of the council. I've noted that on there also. But, you know, if you want to find out um, how to get something on an agenda, there's your rules. I've thrown in a couple of other items. One is kind of a kind of an interesting item because I get this question a lot, and it's and finally the attorney generals have opined on this, and that is when can a when can a current council bind a future council, and what can they bind for? So we all assume that you can bind for a contract, you know, for a ten-year contract or a real estate contract, but what can't you as a council bind a future council for? And so this is a good summary. And it's interesting because it's going to come up in, in a couple different contexts this year. But one of the things you can't bind another, a future council is on the levying of taxes. So you don't have authority to say, uh, to agree to not levy taxes. And um, like I say, that'll come up, that'll come up in, in context uh, throughout um, this coming year. And then I threw this uh, motion chart in uh, because, again, as we sit here, you know, um, we're trying to decide, you know, are the votes correct, are the motions correct, that kind of thing. So I thought I'd give you the cheat sheet that I use. And the guide down in the left-hand corner, and this will serve you at any any kind of uh, meeting that you're at, we call it a sedammer. So on a motion, the question is, does it require a second? Is it debatable? Is it subject to amendment? What kind of vote count do you need? And is it subject to reconsideration? So it's a simple chart, but it's a helpful chart. Good question. Um You've done an excellent job on this PowerPoint, and I'm, I'm thinking about from the standpoint of going through this and then taking this portion of the meeting and making it available and so forth. And I feel like because of our time constraints and the fact that we do have an executive session afterwards, I'm wondering if we should postpone this 
Um, I'd like the council's input on that. I'm, I, I know we, we have the intent to get through the agenda, but if, if we just do a high level, my concern is that we won't have accomplished the goal and you've done some really neat stuff mm -hmm. here. So, I understand that. And, and um, I was hoping that uh, I could outrun Bonnie on uh, as she flipped through it, but <laughs> I'm also good for coming back. <laughs> oh, I, Your Honor, I'm looking at futures, and next week's meeting, the only item that we had on there, other than items on the consent calendar, were Local Government 101 Part 2. So you could do Part 1 and Part 2 next week. Is the council okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's worth really taking your time with it, because this is going to be watched a lot, and it's a valuable tool, so I, I want you to really put yourself into it Great. and not feel rushed. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Okay, well, thank you. I was kind of hoping to hang out till 11 o'clock tonight or so. Well, yeah. Really? <laughs> well, I don't like this new administration. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll let you hang out here and turn out the lights. Yeah. It's all right. You might get lonely, but, you know. Um, so, uh, again, thank you for your flexibility, everyone. Um, so we'll postpone this and do both parts one and two at the uh, next week's meeting. Um, and this is going to take us forward to our executive session. Um, the purpose of this executive session is to discuss the performance of a public employee under RCW 42.30.1101G. Um, we will return to adjourn after the executive session uh, for those who don't want to wait. Um, uh, our next meeting will be January 14th uh, at 7 p.m. It's an open public meeting here. Um, on, the consent uh, on the consent agenda or consent calendar, we have the Human Services Advisory Committee appointments, uh, draft resolutions to set a public hearing for uh, the adult entertainment ordinance, um, parks and right-of-way landscape maintenance contract with uh, Northwest Landscape Services, and we will be doing under new business um, local government 101 <coughs> parts one and two uh, part two is the open public meeting act and part one is the council Man manager form of government so your honor we need to uh, announce a time frame um, so for half an hour in executive session the executive yeah there wasn't anything here so uh, right and so, the city attorney pointed that out to me um, so we will be headed into executive session till uh, approximately, I'm going to say 9:50. And uh, is there any action expected when you come out? No, no. There's no action expected. Good. So, with that, if you want to wait till we come back to say goodbye, you're welcome. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll hopefully see you guys all later. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>